Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCA and Cisco Press author, and in this video we want to take a look at a couple of ways that we can configure OSPF to support the routing of IP version 6 networks. Now the assumption that I'm making here is that we already know how to set up OSPF version 2. This is how we've traditionally set up OSPF to route IP version 4 networks for years, and I've already got that set up on all of my routers in this topology, but I want to show you a couple of ways that we could add support, while we're still supporting routing for IPv4, how we can add support for the routing of IPv6. Now we're not able to use OSPF version 2 to do that, we have to use OSPF version 3, but there's a couple of approaches. One approach is to configure OSPF version 2, as I've already done, to support the routing of IPv4 networks, and then add a separate configuration to support the routing of IPv6 networks. That's what we're going to do first. And I'm going to begin over here on router R5 because I've already got IP version 6 routing and IP version 4 routing set up on routers R1 through R4. So let's just focus on router R5. Let's go into global configuration mode. And to enable the routing of IP version 6 packets, I need to say IPv6 unicast hyphen routing. And just as a best practice, I like to turn on IP version 6 Ceph, Cisco Express forwarding. So I'll say IPv6 Ceph. And now let's start up that OSPF version 3 routing process. I'll say IPv6 router OSPF, and I give a locally significant process ID. I'll just say 1. And I'll set up a router ID here. I'll say my router ID is 5.5.5.5. And in this topology, you could see that interface gigabit 0 slash 2 on router R5, that would be a good candidate to be a passive interface. I don't have any potential OSPF neighbors off of that interface. So I'm going to say passive hyphen interface for gigabit 0 slash 2. Now, how do I tell the interfaces to start participating in this routing process? If I give some context sensitive help, you'll see that here for IP version 6, there is no network command. When we set up OSPF to route IP version 4, we would give the network command oftentimes, and we would say any interface whose IP address is within the address space defined by this network command, we want that interface or those interfaces to participate in the routing process. We did have the option with OSPF version 2 of going into the interface itself and saying that, hey, I want you to participate in this process. Well, with IP version 6, setting it up like this, we have to go into the interface. Here's what I mean. We're going to go into interface gigabit 0 slash 1, and I'm going to say I want you to participate in IP version 6 OSPF routing for process ID 1, and I want this interface to belong to area 0. Let's do the same thing for interface gigabit 0 slash 2. Oh, you see we have a neighborship that got established. That's good news. We'll go into gigabit 0 slash 2. And again, I'll say IPv6, OSPF1, area 0. Now at this point, we're exchanging IPv6 routes. Let's do a show IPv6 route command. And you can see that I can see routes that are part of OSPF. Now, by the way, I'm not doing redistribution of EIGRP into OSPF here. That's the reason we don't see all the networks on screen. I've been using this topology for something else, but I wanted to shoot a quick video to show you how to do this IPv6 configuration. So I'm exchanging IPv6 routes, but the issue with this type of configuration is that we first have to configure OSPF version 2 to support IPv4, and then we have to configure OSPF version 3 to support IPv6, and it might get a little cumbersome to try to figure out our configuration if we're looking at two different routing configurations. Well, there's another option. What we can do is use the address family approach to configuration. If you're familiar with the named EIGRP configuration, this is very similar. With the address family approach, we get to create one OSPF instance, and then that instance can have multiple families underneath it. We could have one family for IPv4 routing and another family for IPv6 routing. The idea being that it's going to be a lot easier to interpret what's going on because we've got that one hierarchical structure containing both of our routing processes, one for IPv4 and one for IPv6. To illustrate that, let's get rid of the configuration that I have right now. Let's say no router OSPF1. That gets rid of my IP version 4 OSPF routing. Let's also do a no IPv6 router OSPF1. That's what we just set up, by the way. 
So now we don't have any routing set up on this router. Let's set up OSPF to use address families. Here's how we do that. We're going to say router and then we'll say OSPF version 3 and again I give a locally significant process ID. I'll just say 1. I'll give a router ID like I did before. I'll say router hyphen ID 5.5.5.5 and now I can start setting up my address families. I can say I want an address family. Let's use some context sensitive help. I could have either IP version 4 or IP version 6 or both. I'm going to say I want to set up my address family for IP version 4 first of all. Let's give some context sensitive help to see what we can do in this configuration mode. A lot of the things that we would traditionally set up from a router OSPF configuration mode, those types of commands are available here. But I'm not going to set anything up in this mode. I'm going to exit out and I'm going to set up our second address family. I'll say address hyphen family. This time it's going to be for IP version 6. Again, I've got a similar set of commands that could apply just to that IPv6 address family. Or what I wanted to show you is I could back out of this. I could be in router configuration mode and I could give a command here and the command I give here gets inherited down to both of my address families. For example, for both IPv4 and for IPv6, I'd really like gigabit 0 slash 2 to be a passive interface. I can set that up here and it's going to be inherited down. Let's say passive hyphen interface gigabit 0 slash 2. Let's make sure that that got inherited down. I'll do a do show run pipe to section router OSPF v3 and check it out for the IPv4 address family we have gigabit 0 slash 2 as a passive interface and the same thing for the IPv6 address family. So we gave that one command in a router configuration mode and it got in here to down. Now here is a difference. This is something that's not quite as good as named EIGRP. With named EIGRP we've got this one hierarchical structure that I was talking about and everything is contained under that hierarchical structure. We don't have to go into interface configuration mode to do anything with named EIGRP. We actually do with OSPF address families. I wish we didn't but we do. So I'm going to go into interface gigabit 0 slash 1 and I'm going to tell it to participate in both of my address families. I'll say OSPF version 3 for process ID 1. I want you to belong to the IPv4 address family and I want you to belong to area 0. And I'll give a very similar command for the IPv6 address family. Notice we had an IPv4 neighborship get established. That's because I've got a matching configuration on router R4. And now we have both a neighborship for IPv4 and for IPv6. Excellent. Let's go ahead, because I want this interface to participate in OSPF, let's go ahead and do the same thing for interface gigabit 0 slash 2, even though we're not going to be sending out hello messages out of that interface, because we set it to be a passive interface, I still want it to participate. I still want its network to be advertised. So I still want to go into that interface and say I want you to belong to area 0 for the IPv4 address family and also for the IPv6 address family. And instead of doing a show IP OSPF neighbor to see our neighbor like we would traditionally do or show IPv6 OSPF neighbor, although we could actually do a show IPv6 OSPF neighbor because that is OSPF version 3 that we're running, but the show IP OSPF neighbor, that's OSPF version 2 so it shows me nothing. But what if I want to see my IPv4 neighbor? Well instead of saying show IPv6 OSPF neighbor, I would do a show OSPF v3 neighbor. And this is going to show me that I have a neighbor for my IPv4 address family and I have a neighbor for my IPv6 address family. This is the way that we can see that both neighborships have been established. If we want to look at the OSPF database we can do a show OSPF v3 rib, that's a routing information base, and we can see the networks known to the OSPF database for IP version 4 and also for IP version 6. And we can do a confirmation that we've actually injected routes into the IP routing table and the IPv6 routing table. We'll do a show IP route. And as evidenced by the, the O's here, we have learned things via OSPF for IPv4 networks. Let's do a show IPv6 route. 
And we can see we've learned networks here as well. And that's a quick look at two different ways that we can configure OSPF version 3 to support the routing of IP version 6 networks. We can create a separate process in addition to our IP version 4 process, or we could use the address family approach, which is hopefully going to make our configuration easier to interpret.